Hello everybody, this is Gamer Scott, and welcome to my top 5 games of 2019. First of all, I'll explain to you my made up rules for this stuff. Um, these are games that I didn't play until 2019. Right, so there's going to be some of the games maybe possibly came out in 2018, but I didn't play them until 2019. Um, so some games you may be surprised to see not on this list as spoilers. Some like Slay the Spire, I started playing in 2018, so I scrapped that off the list. And also a bunch of Yakuza games, with how much I've been talking about them lately. I didn't start playing those back until the beginning of the new year 2020. So those two games I want to just point out, uh, if I had played those in 2019, they would certainly have a spot on this list somewhere, but because of my fake made up rules that I created for this, they're not going to be on the list. So anyway, jumping right in at number five, we have Detroit Become Human. And this is one of the games that did come out in 2018, I believe, like May or June or something like that. Um, but I didn't play until 2019 and it was a wonderful game. It kind of, it's not really stylistically like graphically the same but kind of think of it as a life is strange sort of game like you play as a character in this game Detroit Become Human you play as three different characters um, that are all like androids and stuff kind of like robotic servants to help you out around the house and whatnot um, but you just play through the game you make a bunch of choices um, and that will affect how the game plays through and at the end of each chapter each scene or whatever you can kind of see all the branching pathways and your specific branching pathway and you can also see the percentage of everyone in the world who also ended up with those same story who made the same choices as you and as a math person seeing all those statistics those percentages is really cool and even as a not math person i think seeing you know if you were kind of in the majority or the minority of who made the same decisions and stuff is just a neat thing. Um, so all these three characters, you got Kara, Marcus, and Connor are just fantastic. Uh, if you play through this game, you're going to have some kind of preferences for, you're going to like some characters more than another. I think Connor and Hank, the duo, are probably everybody's favorite. That seems to be the consensus. Um, so I just had a great time playing through this game. Sure, some of the subtext and message behind the game can be a bit heavy-handed at times, but it's a video game. It serves its purpose, which is to entertain the people playing it. And I was certainly entertained while playing it. Um, so that's why this game is going to rank number five in this list. So next up, coming in at number four on my list, is the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Whenever Crash got announced to uh, be remastered for the PS4, I was excited and just pumped to play a remastered Crash game. Either way, that came back out in 2018, I believe. Um, but whenever Spyro got announced, I was excited. Static, right? Uh, back in the PS1 days, the original era of Crash vs. Spyro, a lot of people were super Crash fans, a lot of people were super Spyro fans. Of course, if you were a fan of one, you're most likely a fan of the other. But you had your preference, and I personally preferred Spyro over Crash. Again, I enjoyed both very much, but Spyro was just my preference of the two that I enjoyed playing more. So, of course, Spyro had to find its way onto this list. Going through all the worlds in a remastered PS4 age and just seeing everything bright and vibrant and new was exciting to relive, uh, you know, your childhood nostalgia. And nothing is stronger than nostalgia. Um, there were some choices, I don't know if it was just because I was used to playing PS1 and seeing uh, a lot less polygons and stuff, and seeing everything more pixelated, kind of gave it its charm, so there were some things I was a little bit 
you know, wish it didn't get changed too much. Um, but my favorite character, other than Spyro, is, of course, uh, Bianca in Spyro 3, the bunny. And they stayed pretty true to her design. And I was super excited about that. But just playing through all the Spyro, Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, and Year of the Dragon was a great uh, time going back and playing an old game back from my childhood. And if I had to pick one, I don't know. I think... Like I said, even though Bianca is my favorite character in the original three, I don't even think I played the Enter the Dragon Flyer Beyond. But I think I'd have to go with Ripto's Rage was my favorite of the three. But anyway, that's why Spyro Reignited Trilogy ends up at number four on this list. Next up at number three on the list, we have Super Mario Maker 2. Of course, as long as you had some type of Nintendo handheld console at some point in your life, or even a GameCube or Nintendo 64 or whatever, it's highly probable that you have played some Super Mario game at some point in your life. And so, Nintendo decided to once again give us all the chance to make our own Mario levels. I never played Super Mario Maker 1 that was on the Wii or Wii U or something. I never really had that. Switch has been kind of my first, like, Nintendo home console. You know, even though it is, like, handheld and a home console. I never had a GameCube or N Nintendo 64. Of course, I had all their handhelds, Game Boy, Color, Advance, and then all their DSs and stuff. Um, but I never had a home console, so I didn't have Super Mario Maker 1. But I played all the Super Mario Makers on the Game Boys, 3DSs, regular DSs, all those fun stuff. And so Super Mario Maker 2, you get to play other people-created levels, which is just a blast. Sometimes you just want to go on a 20-second uh, speed run where all you have to do is pretty much hold the right arrow and let the dopamine kick in as everything just kind of lines up nice and perfectly and you make it to the finish line with like 0.001 seconds left to spare. Um, so much design goes into those levels which I don't understand how they do it but it's a fun time. Other times you got some puzzle levels that are great and you got some classic platformer levels which are always a fun to play because that's what Super Mario Brothers are, is a platforming game. Uh, so, Super Mario Maker 2 is a fantastic game, and of course, in addition to playing levels that other people have created, you can also go ahead and, of course, create your own levels as well, which is just a joy. And there is a story mode in there as well, which is just kind of... They threw it in there just to have a story mode, but that's not the real part of the game. The real part is playing other community-made levels and having a good time with those. So that's why Super Mario Maker Brothers... No, not Super Mario Maker Brothers 2. Just Super Mario Maker 2 uh, clocks in at number 3 on this list. And now, at number 2 on my top 5 games of 2019... We have Tetris 99, which is also exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. If you would have told me or anybody that if you mix Tetris with Battle Royale and it would be an amazing game, you'd probably get laughed at, but that's exactly what they did. Tetris 99 is maybe the best Battle Royale because you're always doing something. You know, all the other Battle Royales of shooters, of course, is what mostly Battle Royales are. Um, you know, you just run around the map and maybe every few minutes you run into somebody and either shoot them or get shot. And if you shoot them and win the encounter, then you go on, run a little bit more for five minutes to get another 20 seconds of combat. And then it's over. But in Tetris 99, you're always playing. You're always doing something. Just playing your own little Tetris game while also targeting other people. And trying not to get killed by other people's garbage. And 
Although the idea is very simple, it is executed flawlessly, and the soundtrack, of course, is great. And they've done a great job kind of, you know, still building on it since it came out. Um, uh, making the new backgrounds and stuff. Having events, get tickets to unlock new backgrounds, and they got just regular tickets for beating challenges. And they've had, I think they did come up with a squad mode recently, which is awesome. And they just keep building on an already fantastic idea, and it just keeps getting better. But Tetris 99 is going to clock in at number two. And now, before we get to the number one game, or at least my number one game, of 2019. Again, this is a very subjective, is that the word? Like opinionated uh, baseless objective versus subjective. I think subjective is the more opinion version. I don't know. Uh, I'm a math teacher. I don't know words. Uh, we have some honorable mentions. I do want to shout out two games on this list that didn't make it into my top five. First of all, we got The Witness, which is a maze puzzle game um, that I played throughout the summer. Um, it kind of has a weird little story kind of behind it. I haven't gotten the real ending, so that's maybe part of the reason it didn't get in the top five. Um, but it is a wonderful game. You kind of explore the environment, and there's a wonderful world that it's in. Um, but you explore the environment, solve some puzzles, which are kind of like maze-like tablets or whatever you want to call them. It's a great game, great puzzle game. And so that's one of my honorable mentions. I don't know which would have came in at 6 and 7, um, but that probably would have been up there if I had included 6 or 7. The other game I just want to shout out real quick is Streets of Rogue, which is a very interesting roguelike game. You kind of just play as a character and do a bunch of quests on each floor, pick up various weapons, use various abilities, and kind of upgrade your stuff or find better items or whatever. And, you know, get through each floor, completing each quest. And it's a very interesting take on a roguelike. And I had a bunch of fun playing it when I did. I uploaded a little bit to YouTube, um, but I've still played it a little bit more recently. Um, just because it was a good time, and I haven't played in a while. And so that is another game I just wanted to shout out and mention. Um, that I had a great time playing, but unfortunately did not make the list of top five. My favorite game of 2019 is Catherine Full Body. It's a remake of Catherine, kind of what Atlas does with Persona games, Persona 5, they're making Persona 5 Royale. Um, Catherine Full Body is kind of just a reinvention of Catherine, but with some extra new content. Uh, there's a whole new character, Rin, and it's just a fantastic time. And this is pretty surprising, because normally, maybe I'm just thinking of Flash games back in the old days, on like, what is it, addicting games, congregate, all that stuff. I was never a huge fan of puzzle games, but the actual, like, gameplay of this game is what you see right here. It's a puzzle game. Um... But for some reason, pushing and pulling blocks to climb up a tower is something I enjoy doing. And it just has a wonderful story. Every night you go through and just climb towers. And at the end of every night, you are running away from some terrifying creature. Daddy! And then during the game, or not during the game, but during the day, you do get to hang out at a bar every single day and just hang out, talk with your friends, talk with other people at the bar, and play the same game you play during your nightmares as an arcade game. But that is 7,000 more times difficult for some reason, and I sucked at it. But either way, I don't know. Atlas just makes wonderful games. I don't know if it's just the style of it, everything, but I just really like, like I said, the style of the game and the puzzle, the story, everything along that goes with it. And it's just a good time. And of course, 
the hallelujah chorus at the end of every night is always something to look forward to. Um, so that is my list of top five games of 2019. Again, this was just a very personal list of my top five favorite games that I played in the year 2019. Obviously, I think, what was it, Spyro and Detroit Become Human came out in 2018. But still, I didn't play them until 2019. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Put a lot of effort into this. So much more than I have in uh, videos in a while. So, I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and comment. And subscribe if you want to see more videos similar to this and stuff. My 10-year anniversary on YouTube is coming up this year, so I don't know. I'm hoping to maybe put a little bit more effort into some videos and, you know, have something special other than just, like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see when it gets there. It's not until May, but I want to try to go back and put some more effort into videos rather than just streaming on Twitch and exporting my VODs. <laughs> uh, but anyway, like I said, hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff helps out a bunch. And I'll see you next time.